people live. Right, let's bring up the... Uh, not bad today, actually. How are we looking for today? We're up. 4.5%, 4.5%. Hey, Tamara, how you doing? How you doing? Thanks for dropping by. How are you feeling about earnings? Let me let everybody know we are live. Oh, I'm buzzing. Oh, my days, I'm buzzing. You know, I don't know why my heart's racing. Like, <laughs> I've clearly got a lot of money invested in Tattoo Chef because... Uh, yeah, I, my, my heart is racing right about now. <laughs> oh man, I hope we kill it, man. I hope we kill it. Just waiting for, uh, news reports regarding, uh, the, the release. Anything, anything, anything? Yeah, but clearly I've got a lot invested in Tattooed Chef because my heart is pounding right about now. It's pounding and I really hope we do well. I reckon we will. I reckon we will, you know. I, I reckon we'll kill it. Bav, how you doing, brother? TTCF to the moon. Yeah, it's my biggest holding as well, bro. So I'm really, like, my heart's doing a couple of... A couple of do, 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 do. <laughs> um, but nah, honestly, I think we'll kill it. I think we'll kill it. Um, but I am looking forward to it. I am looking forward to it. <laughs> Okay, let's see if there's any news reports regarding because usually they they drop it out before uh, the earnings call. Which, as I'm looking at right now, it's still loading. Okay, so uh, webcast is not available yet, so it's due to start at half nine. Okay, so we've got about another twenty five minutes. But I figured I'll come on, um, start speaking to you guys. Let me you know let let me know what you guys are feeling. Are you guys excited about earnings? <laughs> let me know. Let me know. Let me know. So, Barry, if your FDA approval in the last hour, going to be a great day tomorrow. Okay, Barry. I mean, I haven't been checking on AVEO. My primary focus today have ju has just been TTCF. It is my biggest holding, um, and I am excited about earnings today. I'm nervous. You know, I got the shirt on, so I hope you guys, you know, <laughs> appreciate the the suave. But I am really looking forward to to earnings, um, and I am very nervous but excited at the same time. After hours, we're doing okay. Uh, we're doing okay after hours. It was it was a pretty strong day in general. Um, pretty strong day in general. Any news release? Any news? On hopefully we can get a peep into earnings before the actual earnings call. But how are you guys feeling? How has your day been, guys? How's it been? How's it been? Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Where are we? News, 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 news. No, it's so it's still the news uh, regarding the uh, six plant powered products at Target um, at the moment. So, but I am nervous. My palms are sweaty. <laughs> hopefully we kill it it is my largest holding i mean everybody knows that i've said it many many a times so i really hope we we nail earning earnings sorry earnings so yeah so just to let you know uh, the actual conference call itself will start at half nine so we are about 25 minutes before the earnings call begins so if you're wondering why i'm rambling on or chatting it's just just to kind of go through hopefully we can get a chance to see the actual earnings report before the earnings call so we can just get see what we're saying get everyone's temperature uh, but what do you guys think L let me know in the chat do you think we would kill earnings do you think we will destroy earnings today let me know what's your predictions what's your predictions or let's make it fun what's your predictions for tomorrow <laughs> what do you think the share price will be tomorrow so chet says 22 dollars okay tonight all right i mean that's conservative conservative we've got we're currently at oh see we're currently at 21 dollars and 84 in um oh oh here we go 21 dollars and 95 after hours here we go i like that <laughs> come on so people are saying 22 dollars um who else who else what's your price targets guys for tomorrow well actually for tonight slash tomorrow uh let's go it's out on Bloomberg. Out on Bloomberg. Right, so on CNBC. Let's have a look. 
Come on, come on, come on, come on. Are we out? Where are we out? Where is it? Is it out yet? Is it out? CTCF. Oh, look, come on. Any news? Any news? Any news? Please, please, please. Nothing. Is Are we out yet in terms of the pre-earnings call release? Are uh, we out? So, yeah, how are we doing price-wise, though? So, we are doing good. We are doing good. Uh, 22. So, Chet, you were on point. <laughs> oh, we, we're back down. So, we did see $22. <laughs> but what's your price target? What's your price target for tonight and for to, for market open tomorrow as well? Let's have a look. So, we're up. We're up 1.45%. Oh, we've dropped down. 23 would be nice. Uh, it's already 22. Yep, yep. 27. Okay. Oh, so Chet's upped his price targets to $26. What? By by tonight or market open? <laughs> uh, let me know. Let me know. I'm just going to be checking my phone, guys, just to make sure uh, in case I don't want to miss the, the earnings. So I can bring it up so we can go through it together. Then uh, we'll get ready for the call. But so far... We are looking good. We are looking good in after hours. We're up 1.92%. Where is earnings? Earnings, earnings. So let me uh, holler at the uh, Discord as well. Let, let's the Discord. Uh, we're live chat. Oh, chat's already here. So yeah. Guys, if you are not part of my Discord, you need to jump in to my Discord. You see we have a Tattooed Chef a dedicated channel you know we all love this stock you know it's my biggest holding and we've just been chatting tattoo chef all day so jump in the discord if you need a place to go to talk about tattoo chef and we're almost back at 22 dollars in after hours so some people are predicting 23 dollars 50 look at bloomberg terminal okay 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 let's have a look Where are we? Right, okay, so where are we? Where are we? We are looking good. Okay, so tattoo chef. Come on, give us some news. Give us some news. But not too bad. I mean, not too bad. Not too bad. Still nothing, nothing, nothing. Right, let's have a look. So, fun to, yeah, yeah, I am nervous. I am nervous. Like I said, I've got a lot of money invested in Tattooed Chef. Um, so I am very nervous. <laughs> and and I honestly hope that we kill it. I, I, You know, I'm confident we'll kill it. It's just, I'm still just nervous. It's, it's more a nervous excitement uh more than anything it's more a nervous excitement <laughs> but are you guys nervous or are you chilling are you guys chilling let's see what you're saying let's see what you're saying let's see what you're saying so yeah 26 dollars price target i'm seeing whoa 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 wait we've gone negative in um okay we've gone back to positive it's undecided right now in after hours so yeah yasin pleasure bro thank you for dropping through michael tamara michael um where are we at where are we at where are we are let's 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 squeeze these <laughs> let's squeeze those shorts yep let's do it let's do it okay you put the link okay okay, okay. where have you put the link where mti where have you put the link if you've got the link to the uh earnings let me know i'm trying to look for it let's see let's see let's see let's see If you've got the link, uh, it's out on Bloomberg. Okay, so I'm on Bloomberg. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We got some news. We got some news. Uh, let's go to. It. Let's. We'll, we'll leave. Um, we'll leave Seeking Alpha for now. It's out on Bloomberg. Let's quickly check it up. Let's have a look. Uh, okay, where are we? Where are we? Come on! Come on! Come on! Tattoo Chef. Oh, it's get, I'm getting nervous now. I'm. <laughs> Am I, am I sweating? Why am I sweating? <laughs> <sighs> Whew, 
Wusa, Wusa, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Okay, okay, where's the news? Where's the news? Okay, here we go. Okay. Oh, God, I'm sweating. Why am I sweating? Okay, 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 okay. How are we looking? Okay, okay. So, all right. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. Okay, so, okay, that's, a, that's okay. I don't want to. I don't want to see all that statement. I want to see how we perform. So, financial highlights for first quarter of 2020. Can you guys see it? Okay, by the way, can you guys see my screen, or do you want me to zoom in a bit? Can I zoom in a bit? Can you guys see it? Let me know in the chat if you can see uh, my screen. I've zoomed in a bit. Can you see it? Can you see the uh, text, guys, in my chat? Can you see the chat? Okay, yep, yep, you can see it, you can see it. Okay, so revenue, uh, so revenue was $39.6 million, a 48% increase compared to $26.8 million the prior year, which is to be expected. If you saw the preliminaries, we that's what they pretty much told us. Uh, our previous quarter, uh, we, I think we had 40, we, yeah, we were over 40 million. So the revenue has decreased from, from a quarterly perspective, uh, but if you look at it from a year point of view, um, so that's okay. So they broke it down. So tattooed chef products itself. So remember we're doing, um, pro our own branded products versus private labeling. And that saw an increase of 172%, which is amazing compared to 8.8 .8 million in the prior year. So our branded product sales has gone crazy. That's really, really good. We love to see it. So net income was 41.5 million compared to net income of just 2.2 million in the prior year. Come on, guys. How I'm seeing some of you guys saying uh, it's bad earnings. Is it? it that's not bad. Net income was $41.5 million compared to a net income of $2.2 million in the prior year. The current period net income included uh, a one time tax benefit resulting from the company's change from an S corporation to a C corporation at the time of the reverse merger back in October 2020. The restructuring is anticipation of the merger caused a step up in the tax. Okay, so tax rights of intangible assets creating a deferred tax asset and a tax benefit of $39.3 million. Adjusted EBITDA was $3.7 million, or 9% of revenue, compared to $2.2 million, or 8% of revenue in the prior year period. So adjusted EBITDA is a non-GAAP financial measurement uh, defined under the non-GAAP measures. Apologies. Please see adjusted uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, okay, revenue was $148 million. So that's the full year, okay? So... If you look at the revenue from a quarterly point of view, uh, we missed. We missed because last year, uh, sorry, last quarter was 40 million. But look at our year, our full year revenue was $148 million. Amazing. So that's a 75% increase compared to 84.9 million in the prior year. That's amazing. All right, let's look at after hours before we carry on. Wow. Okay. So after hours is getting battered. Okay. We're down 5% in after hours and uh, we are dropping. We are dropping. So investors clearly do not like uh, this earnings. Pessimism, man. Pessimism. I mean, let's look at it. Revenue. The revenue grew 75% compared to, to last year. Um, so not last year, 2019. So Tattoo Chef branded products, again, was a record. We already knew that. Net income was $45.4 million compared to $5.6 million in the prior year. Uh, they talk about tax. Uh, and yeah. So what's your thoughts? What's your thoughts? What's your thoughts? Of course, after hours, we're not looking good at all. We were touching $22 and we're now down to $20. So we're actually red overall um, on, the, uh, on the day uh what, what's your thoughts let me know let's let's catch up in the chats so yeah okay so yeah bad people are saying it's bad oh you're not happy guys how is this bad how is this bad a 75 percent increase in revenue how i don't i don't see how this is bad you know yeah we are taking but i don't think this is bad results at all i mean revenue it was expected that we weren't going to top um our 
previous quarter's revenue from the preliminaries already. But this is uh, this is insane. For, if you look at it from an annual perspective, 78, 75% increase. Um, okay, so let's have a look. So people are saying it's quite bad, bad, tanking in after hours. Look at the after hours. Okay, so, okay, okay, yeah. So you guys are really focused on the price action. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Are we live? Okay, so we are live. Let me turn that down. Okay, so we're about to go through the earnings call shortly. So once the earnings call starts, I'll stop talking, essentially. Um, but, yeah, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So let the after hours be. That's true. Pre-market values will rise and shine again. My thought buy more tomorrow. It's a sell trap. Isn't a coffin? No, so it's uh, as I said, it's on, it's going to be live in about the next 12 minutes, mate. It's going to be on 12 minutes. So be interesting to compare its competitors' earnings. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Barry, the main competitor is uh, well, Beyond Meat, Impossible Foods, all of those plant based foods right there. So I'm buzzed. Yep, 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 yep. Awesome. Great. Exactly. I thought it was quite awesome. So the, the earnings call hasn't started quite yet, but I thought, you know, a 78% a increase from the prior year, I thought that's amazing. 75% increase. And again, our Tattooed Chef branded products, revenue was 84 million. And remember, just the three, like four years ago, you know, we were predominantly private labeling. So to, to go from private labeling solely to four years later, our branded revenue, our branded products is pulling in 84.6 million. I think that's impressive. I think that's really, really impressive. Uh, a 363% increase compared to 18.13 million in the prior year. Okay, so yeah, granted, we are dropping after hours, but let's look at the bigger picture here, all right? Let's focus on the bigger picture. You know, pes we the intelligent investor buys from pessimists and sells to optimists, okay? So... Uh, I'm personally really happy with our earnings um, and we are still not yet live. So we've got about another 10 minutes before I hand over to the earnings call. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that I thought, it, I thought we did well. I thought we did well. Let me, let, let's check up on your comments. Okay. So earnings was good. I think earnings was great. Okay. Yep. 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 Okay. So some people are, st your case is dropping again. Yeah, I mean, we are dropping in after hours. We we still are. I think we're down 4.5%. 4, 4 um, but don't be concerned about the price action. Focus on the company uh, and not the share price. Don't forget about the ticker. Just focus on the company. And I think we did incredible, okay? I think we did well. So earnings was great, okay? It's current share price isn't irrelevant. Long-term bull. Thank you, Lucas. I'm in agreement with you, Lucas. Long-term bull. Short. I mean, the only reason why I pay attention to short-term price action is because if pessimism sets in, if fear sets in, and there's no fundamental reason for it, then, you know, I just could pick up your shares. Thank you very much. It looks better in my holdings anyways, so. <laughs> okay, yep, yep, they have better. good guidance, yep. They have, yep. Okay, otherwise, yep, yep, very good. Okay, stocks don't only go up, guys. Yep, stocks don't only go up. And again, it's after hours. Things change. How many times have we seen the share price tanking after hours, tanking pre-market, and then just go up during tr the trading session? So, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be phased by this. Like I said in my video, if we drop to $18, I'll pick up some more because I think these are incredible numbers. I'm so happy. I'm so proud of the company from what we've done, from our, our just purely being based on um, private labeling to our branded products right now. The revenue, amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right, let's see where we're at. So operating costs, uh, 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 yep, 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 yep. How, how will they scale? So these are the questions that we hope to see in the earnings call in terms of scalability, um, because I did say that I, I want to see where we are uh, from an international point of view. Because companies, other companies are catching up. The reality is we can't waste any more time in terms of um, our process of going international. We are very slow right now. And if you live in the UK, uh, companies like supermarkets like Tesco, as the, they all have their own brands now that are plant-based food. 
So is there going to be enough space on the shelf for ta- for Tesco's branded plant-based food products and tattooed chefs? I don't know, but we really need to get a move on. Uh, how are we looking? Are we live yet? So we're, we're, so we've got about another eight minutes before the earnings call. Um, and yeah. Okay, let's see what you guys are saying. Let's see what you guys are saying. So growth, growth, growth all the way. Yes, that's all we're focused on, growth. Yep. Intelligent investor is pocket. <laughs> Navid. <laughs> I can see some of the GWB crew. Uh, shout outs to my Discord members. We love you. So why are we drop? So Joe, look. I mean, look at the numbers yourself, Joe. Okay. So we, for the year, we're up seventy five percent increase in revenue. Okay. So we made one hundred and forty eight million for the full year of twenty twenty versus twenty nineteen. We made only eighty four point nine million. Okay. Our branded sales. So Tattoo Chef branded products revenue was a record eighty four point six million, which is a three hundred and sixty three increase. 363% increase compared to 18.3 million. All right, let me scroll down. So let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So again, net income. We're green. Net income. Net income was 41.5 million in three months ended uh, December 31st, 2020, compared to two. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Compared to 2.2 million in the prior year period. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? 2.2 million in the prior year period. And then this year, full year, $41.5 million. But yeah, what's going on after hours? We're dropping. It's crazy. Honestly, if you try to make sense of the market sometimes, yeah, try not to. (laughs) The market can remain irrational longer than we can remain solvent. Uh, So don't forget that. So, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so, follow the business and the share price will follow. Facts, Matthew. Facts. Uh, after hours price is going back up. So, is it going back up after hours? Uh, we're still down 3.4% in after hours. We're still down despite reporting. I mean, that net income says it all. 2.2 million in the prior year period. And now we reported 41.5 million. I'm sorry. That's incredible. How are we looking? Okay, so we've got about another five more minutes, guys. Five more minutes. But yeah, let me know your thoughts regarding how we performed. I think this is incredible. So yeah, Mtai, I'm happy. I am happy. I was nervous. I was sweating before. I've stopped sweating now. So I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Why do you pretend that you're happy? Just be. I am happy. Yo, wh- who would not be happy with a company that produced 2.2 million in the prior year and the following year they produced 4.41.5 million why would i not be happy that's nothing to be sad about <laughs> so yeah i'm not pretending guys i keep on getting accused of being pretending i say i love red days and people are like oh you don't love red days stop pretending i love red days because tattooed chef a couple of weeks ago uh let's go back about yeah tattooed chef drops to 17 dollars because of fear so i bought tattoo chef for about 18 picked up even more at 18 dollars. why would i not be happy (laughs) this is why i love red days because it went on a discount and look at us now we finished the day 21 dollars, even though it was down to 17 dollars. this is why i love red days okay so i'm not faking i'm not pretending i genuinely love red days all right so so stella why the drop though you tell me you tell me pessimism, you know, we, I can't, I can't believe we're dropping the fact that we, after this results, do you know what I'm saying? This results was incredible. And um, yeah. So yeah, just ignore the share price, focus on the business. Okay. So where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Yeah. Okay. So how are we looking? So we've got four minutes left before we go live and I will keep quiet sit back and relax okay 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 what was the earnings okay so we'll look into all of that afterwards uh we've got three minutes before i hand over to these guys to take over the uh, for the earnings call so i'm really looking forward to it how are we looking we're down yeah still about 3.6 percent 
But yeah, guys, let me know in the chat. Were you happy with the results? Were you happy with the results? Um, yes or no? Type in the chat, yes or no. I'm personally happy. I'm personally happy. Uh, even though I'm getting accused of being fake happy, I'm actually happy. <laughs> but yes, 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 yes. That's how it is. Okay, so nope, Max is not happy. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Because of the one time expense here, is it? Wasn't incurred. We, yep, 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 compared to. Okay, okay. So let's see. Can we see the earnings per share, the EPS? Let's have a look. I'm trying to spot through it. Further earnings per share. I don't know. See it. Trying to skim through. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Can't really see it. Obviously, I haven't had a chance to fully go through it and read it. Um, but do you guys know what the EPS was? Let me know in the chat what the earnings per share was. Um, I'll try to look for it, skim through it. But yeah, we'll we'll wait. We've got about two minutes left before we go live. Two minutes before the earnings call. Okay, so okay, so just divided the out. Okay, okay. Love you, going to correct it. Uh, thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm I'm much more settled now, to be honest. Judging from the growth, I, I'm really, really happy personally. As a, as a it's my hot, it's, it's my biggest holding in my portfolio, and I am happy. I am happy. So we've got a minute left, and I'm going to hand over to these guys. But I will be in the comment section as well. All right. Let's play this ugly music. All right, so I'm getting complaints about the music. All right, okay. All right, the music's off <laughs> until they take. <laughs> okay, so until they actually start talking, uh, I've turned the music off because I think you guys do not like the music. <laughs> I, I'm not the DJ. I'm not the DJ. I'm just an investor. All right. So, no, 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 no. So sorry, sorry about the bad music, guys. I apologize. Sorry, sorry about the bad music. <laughs> yeah, so M tight, exactly. GoPro is another great point. You know, we smashed it quarter after quarter for the year and it drops. But today, GoPro had a good day. GoPro had a good day. I'm not gonna bring up GoPro, you know, because uh, obviously it's tattooed chef. Uh, how are we looking? We're down four percent in um after hours. We are dropping, guys. We are dropping. Okay, 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 okay. Did I? No, I did not. No, I did not. I did uh, chat. No, I did not, brother. Okay. <laughs> that was the microphone. <laughs> Earnings were flat if you remove the tax refund. Okay. So, Tom, I haven't had a chance to obviously go through it in detail. Um, I'm just reporting the highlight, the standout numbers. From the Bloomberg terminal, of course, there will be after after the, this uh, earnings call. I'll be able to look for it and give my full review um, tomorrow. But as of right now, on the face of it, it looks decent. It looks decent. Okay, so these guys are now officially one minute late. It's ain't a good look, yo, Galetti, Sarah Galetti, where you at? <laughs> Your stock is dropping. We need you to come and save the day. <laughs> We're down 4% in after hours. Where are they? Where are they? I swear they were late on analyst day as well, weren't they? They were late about two, three minutes on analyst day. Um, well, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, let's see. Let's see. So Tattoo Chef should have used uh, Drake's new tune, correct? 
Correct. <laughs> Italians are always... <laughs> now, I think Nigerians are always late. Nigerians are always late for everything. So... <laughs> Okay, so we're two minutes, they're two minutes late right now. What is going on? Where is Sarah Galetti? We're two minutes late. This is not a good look, guys. Are we dropping further because we're late? Okay, okay. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, okay, so still. Horrible music at the moment. Come on, Tattooed Chef. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> People are calling them slackers. Okay, hold on. The music stopped. No, music's back on. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Music's still on. So they're three minutes late now for the earnings call. What is going on? <laughs> what is going on? This is not a good look. I want is the share price getting hit because they're late four percent. Okay, I'm starting to sweat again. Uh, just so you guys are aware. Hold on. Anything? Oh, come on, guys. Okay, they stopped the music. Oh, goodness. Are you kidding me? So we're about four minutes late now. More music. Ah, oh, this is not a good look. This is not a good look. Come on. Four minutes behind. Right, let's keep the chat going then. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, see, hey, Africans are late. Well, clearly Italians as well. <laughs> they are running late. Uh the share price. I'm 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 starting to sweat again. I can't even lie. I why are we not on yet? It's four minutes in. But yeah, don't worry. We'll, we'll eventually come on, I hope. People are saying uh, uh delivering pizza. Okay, pizza's everywhere. <laughs> You know what we're doing? We're delivering our inventory to Target. That's why we're late. Okay. So Target just rang and they said they need some new stock. <laughs> so that's why we're running late a bit. All right. Um, okay. So yeah, that's why we're late because uh, we're delivering our new targets, uh, our new products to Target. So <laughs> here we go. After the presentation, there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions. To join the question queue, you may press star, then one on your telephone keypad. Should you need assistance during the conference call, you may signal an operator by pressing star and zero. I would now like to turn the conference over to Rachel Perkins, Investor Relations. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to Catch Your Chef fourth quarter and full year 2020 earnings conference call. On the call today are Sam Galetti, President and Chief Executive Officer, Sarah Galetti, Chief Creative Officer and the Tattoo Chef, and Chuck Gargile, Chief Financial Officer. Stephanie Dykeman, Chief Operating Officer, and Matt Williams, Chief Growth Officer, will also be available for questions. By now, everyone should have access to an earnings release, which went out at approximately 4.05 p.m. Eastern Time today, March 10, 2021. If you've not had a chance to review the release, it's available on the investors portion of our website at www.tattooedchef.com. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that the prepared remarks contain forward-looking statements. Such statements involve a number of known and unknown uncertainties, many of which are outside the company's control and can cause future results, performance, or achievements to differ significantly from the results, performance, or achievements expressed or implied by such forward-looking statements. Important factors and risks that could cause or contribute to such differences are detailed in the company's filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Except as required by law, the company undertakes no obligation to update any forward-looking or other statements herein 
whether as a result of new information, future events, or otherwise. In addition, within our earnings release and in today's prepared remarks, adjusted EBITDA and adjusted EBITDA margin are referenced. It is important to note that these are non-GAAP financial measures that we believe are useful metrics that better reflect the performance in our business on an ongoing basis. A reconciliation of these non-GAAP financial measures, their most directly comparable GAAP financial measures, are included in today's press release, which has also been posted on our website. And with that, it is my pleasure to turn the call over to Tattoo Chest President and CEO, Sam Galetti. Thank you, Rachel, and good afternoon. We appreciate everyone taking the time to join us on today's call. I'll begin today's discussion with key business highlights, including an update on our new distribution wins. Carol will discuss our marketing and innovation, and then Chuck will provide greater detail on the financials. First, our fourth quarter revenue highlights. We are pleased to report revenue increased 48% to a 39.6 million compared to the fourth quarter of last year driven by our Tattoo Chef branded products. Our branded product sales for the quarter were a record 23.9 million, an increase of 172% compared to 8.8 million in the fourth quarter last year. Branded sales accounted for 60% of the total revenue in the fourth quarter of 2020. For the full year, revenue was 148.5 million, a 75% increase year over year. Branded sales increased 363% to 84.6 million, or 57% of the total revenue for 2020, compared to 22% in 2019. The first in the company the branded exceeded private label sales, and we expect that split to reach as high as 75 to 80% branded within the next two to three years. We believe we are still in the early innings of the Tattoo Chef growth as a brand and as a company. We formed Tattoo Chef in 2017 after Sarah recognized the lack of readily available, high quality, clean, clean cooking. Okay, we're going to try to refresh the page because the slides are not coming up. Uh, one moment, guys. Products are sold in all 50 states, and we took the company public. The Tattoo Chef brand is for every lifestyle, and we attract consumers of all ages and demographics. We believe our historic and continued success with clubs across an array of Tattoo Chef branded products indicates that the Tattoo Chef brand resonates with consumers and would be attracted to conventional retail grocery customers. Coupled with the fact that we have spent little money on increasing brand awareness since we were historically focused on private belief that potential. We participate in the 55 billion U.S. frozen food category, a 380 billion market globally, and we are aligned with many major food trends. We have the innovative products and the vertically integrated supply chain and manufacturing capabilities to compete across multiple categories within frozen food, and little brand recognition or household penetration today. As we announced in December, we hired the national marketing firm Nitro C to implement a comprehensive brand marketing campaign this year, which Sarah will touch on in a few minutes. Our growth strategy is focused on expanding and increasing distribution of Tattoo Chef branded products with new and existing customers. We continue to set the foundation for broad market expansion. At the end of 2020, our Tattoo Chef branded products were nearly 4,300 stores and had 23,000 points of distribution. We have made significant progress in gaining new retail distribution at the start of 2021. Based on our new retailer partners that have committed in Q1, Tattoo Chef will be available in an additional 1,765 chain stores with 8,000 new points of distribution. This is a 41% increase in stores and a 35% increase in points of distribution over where we finished 2020 versus what we expect for the first quarter of 2021. We will further discuss the positive momentum as we expand our channel performance. Starting with the club channel, we launched our first MVM with Costco in March. With this program, Tattoo Chef six pack organic off-e-bowls will be available in every Costco nationwide for the entire month. This program will continue to allow us to introduce Tattoo Chef to more consumers through the Costco member. 
In Sam's Quest, we continue to demonstrate our leadership position as a plant-based frozen food partner. In addition to our four tattooed chef items that are sold on an everyday basis nationally, we have had four limited time offers in Q1. Three of our limited time offers were new items, tempera cauliflower wings with buffalo and sweet chili sauce, cauliflower white pizza, and our plant-based sausage breakfast bowl. Our fourth LTO was the veggie hemp bowl, which has performed so well that it will be brought back on rotation later this year. We are also able to continue to share the Tattoo Chef brand message with Sam's Club's member in Q1. Tattoo Chef was featured in two Sam's Club in-store booklets on the front page in both January and March. The January ISB focused on plant-based foods and featured the Tattoo Chef portfolio. And on the March ISB featured Sarah Galetti for Women's History Month. With the circulation of 18 million, we were honored to be part of both programs. We continue to see this momentum translate in our business performance. With the 52 weeks ended 12 27, 2020, as reported in SPIN, Tattoo Chef is up 376% in Sam's Club, which is significantly outpacing the frozen categories in which we compete. Tattoo Chef is the number three brand in the combined frozen categories in which we compete, which includes frozen breakfast, entrees, and fruits and vegetables. More specifically, in the frozen fruits and vegetables category, Tattooed Chef is the number one selling brand in both dollar, total dollar sales and dollar growth in Sam's Clubs. We are confident that our strong business performance as well pipeline and innovation will allow us to build on the strong foundation in the future. We have achieved this category leadership position in only one year of sales. Tattooed Chef's momentum and mass channel continues with 33% growth for the 52 weeks ending 12-27-2020. According to SPIN, Tattooed Chef grew three times faster than the category in 2020. Our ACV and mass is 59.8, which is up 300% year over year. Our TDPs, or total distribution points, are up 285%. We are also excited to share we've expanded our partnership with Target. As we announced this morning, six new SKUs will be available nationally starting next week. These new SKUs plus our current smoothie bowl line will now give the Target guests the opportunity to enjoy Tattoo Chef for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In Grocery Natural, Tattoo Chef is currently offering 38 unique SKUs across five different frozen categories. By the end of Q1, we will have retailers and dis distributors selling 24 of these SKUs. We are starting to see the results of the work we did in the fourth quarter to develop our retail program and start materializing the market. Tattoo Chip products will be on shelf by the end of Q1 in key retailers across the country, such as Stop and Shop, Southeastern Grocers, and England. These retailers will feature a variety of product categories, including pizza, entree bowls, vegetables, and smoothie bowls. In addition to the retail, retailer commitment that will start selling Tattooed Chef in Q1, we also have additional retail, retailer commitments including Whole Foods, Meyer, Lowe's Foods, and United Supermarkets, a division of Albertsons. Our new distributor relationships with UNFI, KE, and Lapari are showing promise as well. Tattooed Chef products are now available at these distributors warehouses across the country, and we are encouraged by the progress that sales teams are making to introduce the full line of Tattoo Chef to local and regional grocery and natural accounts. Between the new distribution and map and the grocery natural commitments, along with other retailer negotiations that are underway, we are now confident that we will achieve our 2021 objective of 10,000 stores and 65,000 distribution points for Tattoo Chef at year-end. Just to recap, all the new stores that are expanding their Tattooed Chef line and carrying products for the first time are Target, Stop and Shop, Southeastern Grocers, Ingalls, Bristol Farms, Whole Foods, Myers, Lowe's Foods, and United Supermarkets. We have also started working with Thrive Market and will have product available on their online marketplace starting next week. We look forward to announcing our second quarter wins to you soon. With our retail expansion well underway, our next sales channel focus will be food service. With COVID-19 restrictions expecting to mitigate and students and employees return to campus and the workplace, we think the time is right to introduce Tattoo Chef to the business 
industry and education channel. With our existing entree and smoothie bowl portfolio, distribution network, and a new food service broker partner, we are excited about what the future holds for us in food service. We will share our progress in these channels throughout the year. We expect our growth to continue giving the different channels for growth, including grocery, club, bath, as well as our innovation pipeline. As we outlined in our analyst day in December, we believe that given the white space within the frozen food aisle, we can achieve 300 million in revenue, primarily from product expansion in current and existing retailers, new platforms like desserts and family meals, and increasing our SKU count to over 200 through innovation. We see a path to 500 million in sales as we look to expand beyond the frozen food section and into the grocery aisle with shelf-stable products. And we will consider strategic m and to accelerate our growth in certain areas. We have approximately 200 million in cash and will invest in the business and capitalize on opportunities that we think will create long-term shareholder value. One of our key competitive advantages is, we, is that we are vertically integrated. By being the manufacturers of our own product, we can take a new idea from concept to production to shelf in as little as three months. We have two facilities today, one in the U.S. and one in Italy. In the U.S. facility, we have doubled our capacity in 2020 and added additional production square footage. For example, on one of the lines, we're able to manufacture around 15,000 bowls per shift. And today, through investment in equipment, we're able to manufacture over 35,000 bowls per shift on the same line using the same number of people. The Italian facility also increased production of rice cauliflower from 110,000 pounds per day to 200,000 200, pounds per day. And in August, we expect this increase to 400,000 pounds per day. We'll continue to increase capacity during 2021 to keep up with the expanded growth and demand of tattoo chest products. And now I'd like to turn the call over to Sarah to discuss our innovation and our marketing efforts. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. I'm excited to be here to provide a little more insight on our innovation and marketing initiatives. We are disrupting the frozen aisle in retailers nationwide with our plant-based foods. Our ability to spot trends quickly and constantly innovate is what resonates with consumers and retailers alike. We were the first to go to the mass market with cauliflower crust pizza and acai bowls and have a pipeline of over 150 additional plant-based ideas. We make food that we want to eat, and we make it easy for consumers to enjoy with a little to no prep. 2020 was a big innovation year for Tattoo Chef. We released 17 new branded SKUs during the year, bringing our total to 38 SKUs as of December 31st, 2020. We've been happy with the performance of these new items, and it has prompted more discussion with retailers around future innovation. We have 24 new SKUs planned for 2021, 13 of which will be launching in the first half of 2021 at club and conventional retailers nationally. We are especially excited about the launch of our 100% certified plant-based pizzas. We have five SKUs, a two cheese, vegetables, meat lovers, pepperoni, and a white pizza. The meat lovers and pepperoni have meat alternatives using a clean ingredient deck. And we believe our vegan cheese is superior to any others in the market today. These new pieces are one of only to have a plant-based certified stamp, which is important for us to have on our packaging. The meat alternative space continues to be attractive to enhance our value-added meal. We are developing more products not only in the meat alternative space, but also things alternative, whether that be rice, pasta, and dessert. We continue to push the limits of what is possible in creating new food concepts and are making a stand in multiple spaces indoors. We are continually bringing new ideas to the marketplace. Given what Sam spoke about earlier with new retail distribution, there is excitement bringing Tattoo Chef into the food aisle. Our food resonates with consumers, and we're encouraged to see the retailer reception to our product portfolio has been so positive. We provide delicious, approachable, and innovative products not only to the growing group of consumers who seek a plant-based lifestyle, but also to the mainstream market. Our broad portfolio of products can satisfy all these occasions, whether that be a meal, snack, or side dish, making us a go-to supplier for retailers seeking to offer a complete plant-based portfolio. As we discussed at our analyst day, we have hired the national marketing firm Nitro C to help increase our brand awareness as we grow our distribution. 
will be investing $15 million across digital video, connected TV, digital display, social media, and search engine marketing. Since bringing them on board at the start of the year, we have successfully deployed an initial test campaign with banner ads in the Los Angeles and Atlanta market. Starting in March, we will be moving into phase two with innovative six and 15 second video campaign commercials and expanding into additional markets across the country. We will prioritize investment in markets and zip codes with the highest density of distribution and concentration of our target plant-based and tender, and will dynamically adjust to drive demand with each new retailer, SKU, and door. <clears throat> in key areas, we will explore a how high is high approach with broad-based media, including TV, to understand the dynamics of demand beyond the core plant-based and tender consumer. Through our investment approach, we are building a system that will grow as we grow and plant the seed for inclusive national movement to revolutionize plant-based eating. We are still in the early days of collecting marketing data points, but we are confident in our strategy. I can't wait to share more with you in the months to come. Now, I'll turn it over to Chuck to walk through our financials. Thank you, Sarah, and good afternoon, everyone. In the fourth quarter of 2020, we continued on our growth trajectory. Revenue increased by almost 50% to $39.6 million compared to $26.8 million for the prior year for a quarter. As Sam mentioned, the revenue increase was driven by a $50.8 million increase in revenue of Pepsi Chef and products, which now account for almost 60% of our total revenue. Our gross profit was $6.9 million, or 17.4% of revenue compared to $3.9 million, or 14.4%, for the comparable quarter of 2019. The improvement in gross profit and gross margin was primarily due to production efficiencies and the cost of goods sold being spread over greater revenue. We anticipate continued gross margin expansion as we increase our volume. Operating expenses increased to $7.9 million for the three months ended December 31, 2020 compared to $1.9 million for the three months ended December 31, 2019. The increase in operating expenses was primarily due to $3.4 million of stock compensation resulting from equity grants made subsequent to the merger with FMCI in October of 2020. Also, increases in spending to support the growth of the Tattooed Chef branded product and to support the cost of being a public company since October 15, 2020. We expect operating expenses to increase in 2021 to accommodate the growth, invest in the brand, and incur a full year of public company costs. That income was $41.5 million in the three months ended December 31, 2020, compared to $2.2 million in the prior year period. We recorded a tax benefit of $41.9 million in the fourth quarter compared to a benefit of $0.2 million in the prior year period. In October 2020, the restructuring in anticipation of the merger with FMCI caused a step up in the tax basis of intangible assets of approximately $140.5 million, and the stat tax status of the company to change from an S-Corp to a C-Corp. The tax effect of these changes created a deferred tax asset and income tax benefit of $39.3 million. The full year, revenue increased by $63.6 million, or 74.9%, to $148.5 million. The increase was driven by the exceptional growth of Tattooed Chef branded products. In 2020, our branded product growth resulted from expansion in the number of U.S. distribution points, as well as increased volume in existing club channel customers of our current portfolio of products, and new product introductions, including smoothie bowls, vegetable blends, buffalo cauliflower, and other value-added rice cauliflower meals. This profit increased $10 million to $23.7 million for the year ended December 31, 2020 compared to $13.7 million for the year ended December 31, 2019. First margin for the full year 2020 was 15.9%, slightly lower than 16.1% in 
in the year ended December 31, 2019. The gross profit increase was primarily due to the higher revenue levels for the current year. The gross margin declined slightly due to higher costs for raw materials and other variable manufacturing costs in the current year. Operating expenses increased $12 million to $19.5 million for 2020, compared to $7.5 million for 2019, primarily due to increases in costs resulting from higher headcount and wages to manage the increase in revenue, and public company costs, which did not exist in the prior year. We also had $3.4 million of stock compensation expense and a $0.6 million in non-recurring bonus payments for the merger with FMCI. Net income was $45.4 million in the full year of 2020, compared to $5.6 million in the prior year. The net income for the year ended December 31 includes the same $39.3 million income tax benefit I described a minute ago. Adjusted EBITDA was $9.6 million, or 6.4% of revenue for the year ended December 31, 2020, compared to $6.9 million, or 8.1% of revenue for 2019. The improvement in adjusted EBITDA was primarily the result of the increase in revenues and gross profit compared to the prior year period. Our quarterly split of adjusted EBITDA was impacted by transaction costs which were expensed prior to the merger closing in the fourth quarter. Once the transaction closed, in accordance with accounting rules, these costs were credited to income in the fourth quarter and no longer an add back for adjusted EBITDA. I recognize that there's a lot of unusual activity in our fourth quarter financial statements due to the complex accounting for the reverse merger, the non-recurring transaction costs, and the large tax benefits. But irrespective of the one-time activities, we're pleased to post strong profits while managing through significant growth and dramatic organization changes during 2020. As of December 31, we had cash and cash equivalents of $131.6 million. As previously announced, including the cash proceeds from the exercising of public warrants as of February 22nd, the company's total cash balance was approximately $200 million. Lastly, I'll mention that we've been fortunate that the COVID-19 pandemic had a minimal impact to our business in 2020. As a food manufacturer, our operations are deemed essential, and all of our facilities are currently open and operating, both in the U.S. and Italy. Since the start of the year, we've had, we have experienced some shipping delays, particularly in ports that are continuing to closely monitor the situation. At this time, we don't expect the delays to materially impact our first quarter results. Now, turning to our outlook, we are reaffirming our 2021 annual guidance provided at our annual day in December, which includes continued growth in revenue. We anticipate following up on this year's 75% revenue growth with an additional 50% growth in 2021, or approximately $222 million of revenue. The growth will yet again come from Tattoo Chef products. We expect expansion of our gross margin into the range of 20% to 25% of revenue. And we expect adjusted EBITDA for the year to be in the range of $8 million to $10 million as we continue to invest in driving the growth, invest in our brand, and add the cost required to be a public company. And we expect net income to be in the range of $2.5 million to $5 million. With that, we're now available to take your questions. Operator? Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. To join the question queue, you may press star, then one on your telephone keypad. You will hear a tone acknowledging your request. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing any keys. To withdraw your question, please press star, then two. We will pause for a moment as callers join the queue. The first question comes from George Kelly with Roth Capital Partners. Please go ahead. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking my question. Um, Thank so you. I just have a couple, and then I'll, I'll, I have a couple, and then I'll hop back in the queue. But um, 
maybe if you could start, Sam, you listed a lot of new partners that you're launching with uh, new grocers in the first quarter and I think first half of the year. So I guess the question is, are you surprised how quickly you're bringing on additional distribution points? And is there one or two things that, uh, that as you're sort of pitching uh, these folks, are there one or two things that they're most focused on and attracted to your brand? Like, how, how is it happening so quickly? Thanks, George. Uh, the, I don't think that it's, we've been on such an aggressive path the past, the past few years. You know, it's just when we started offering products to Sam's and Costco, the, the brand just connected right away with them. And so we've been on just this great momentum. And so um, I really did feel that when our team started going to retail, that we were going to continue this momentum that we had. And I, it is happening. And it's, it's very exciting. And, and so am, am I am I surprised at it? I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm very pleasantly pleased, though, because I know that there was a lot of people questioning about the, the conversion from club to retail. And I, I was never concerned with it. And, and obviously, it's proving out that the retail consumer is just as, as hungry for plant-based, tattoo chef branded products. So uh, I'm really uh, I'm really excited about what I see happening right now. Okay, great. And then there was a, uh, a discussion in the prepared remarks. I may have missed part of it, um, but I think you talked about adver the, the advertising strategy. And I was wondering if you've turned that on much so far uh, in 2021, and and uh, what has been the response? What what are the learnings with with what you've seen thus far? I'm going to turn that over to Sarah. Hello. So you know, with Tattoo Chef, we've had no marketing um, until 2021 of uh, January, and in our first phase, we were really um, focusing on banner ads and and just gathering the data that we need to to pivot and be strategic with where we allocate our, our dollars for marketing. Um, we're going to be pitching um, and launching in March our commercials, which will be going digitally and connected to connected TV. But right now, we're just still gathering data because we want to really be specific and strategic in where we allocate our, our dollars. OK, OK, gotcha. And then maybe last couple questions just uh, related to guidance, 2021 guidance. Um, can you, uh, I guess, first, just uh, Chuck, you mentioned that there were some uh, shipping delays and some port issues. What will growth, can you help at all with kind of the sequential growth just throughout the year? Will we see the fastest growth of, uh, towards the, the back half and anything we should think about uh, quarterly? I'm actually going to take that one, George. This is Stephanie. When we start to look at what the growth in revenue is going to do throughout the year, we brought up the port delays and things like that so that the information is out there. We have not experienced any delays in our shipments and our products at this time. But we want to be completely transparent. As far as revenue goes, we have some great promotions for first quarter. As you guys heard, Sam say, in which we have the Costco MVM. We have some great promotions next quarter. We have some great product locations, and we're building up the retail chain. And so we expect Tattoo Chef to continue to grow. We have not released the guidance for each quarter, but Tattoo Chef is where it's going, and we are going to continue to open up distribution points and new retailers across the country. Okay, great. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll hop back in the queue. Congrats on a nice quarter. Thank you. The next question comes from Rob Dickerson with Jefferies. Please go ahead. Uh, okay, great. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I guess just to go back to the guidance uh, for a minute, um, you know, there is uh, a decent part of the call right, is highlighting the tremendous amount of positives, right? I mean, it sounds like things right there are going great or even ahead of plan or maybe expected, right, in the conversion into grocery. Um, you know, you called out 
you know, uh, success in Costco are doing very well in Sam's. I know there's a press release this morning uh, about, you know, the six SKUs nationally in Target. And then you called out what, uh, you know, Stock and Sean Meyer, and then there were others maybe getting to thrive. Um, so kind of when I kind of put all that together, right, and then I see that the guidance was reiterated, kind of my knee-jerk reaction is to think, well, you know, there's got to be upside to that guidance if this is all coming through because I thought the guide originally was based upon visibility, right, maybe from some of the prior increased distribution gains um, at Walmart, uh, but maybe not including some of the new business. So I'm just trying to right-size, you know, essentially the held guidance for the year, um, you know, kind of in relation to what seems to be new business wins, if that makes sense. That's it. That's my first question. So, uh, Rob, this is Matt. Um, good afternoon. So, um, you know, obviously the new distribution is, we're super excited about it. You know, again, we, we are building traction and, and we have a great story. Um, but again, as you know, you know, we're, we're distributing our product across a lot of different categories. We've got 30 eight SKUs that we're selling. We sell different categories, obviously, that are under different reset timing throughout the year. And so because of that, you know, when the customers actually come on and when we start realizing revenue this year, um, you know, you're going to see that, you know, some of that revenue growth is obviously going to be factored into Q2 um, and then obviously mid-Q3 and Q4. But the real impact is obviously on our 2022 guidance, which where we obviously enforcing, and that's where we see the full year benefit come in. So it's just staggered then. It comes in in a, uh, a staggered way, and uh, we're super encouraged by it, and we think it's uh, obviously a great uh, demonstration of the, the, the health of the brand, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I hate to push on it. It, it kind of makes sense um, because I, I do feel like, like if you get the new business wins, so what you're coming in in Q1, maybe in Q2, um, like does that, is that more trial basis or it doesn't sound like you're able to, you're not booking that revenue, or maybe you are, right? You're just kind of leaving yourself some leeway because obviously you're still in early innings and high growth mode. I'm just, again, I'm just trying to figure out like if their new business went, that's awesome. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how, how are we supposed to be modeling that in terms of revenue, right? The new doors, new distribution points, new SKUs, etc. Hey Rob, this, this is, hey Rob, this is Sam. How you doing? Um, I, I okay. think that hey, um, when we when we came out with the two twenty two budget for twenty one, we were building in ten to fifteen percent of you know business that we projected just based on conversations. You know, we we have to wait so long. You know, before these uh, these customers will allow us to 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 say to communicate that we win this business. So it's like we, we did put. You know, we do project ten to fifteen percent of that twenty one budget was on assumptions that we make based on the conversations um, that we already had with these retailers. So I, I I'm pretty I'm, again. You know, to have a, a 50 percent. Um, you know, growth organically year over year with our frozen product line is, we're just super excited about it. Yeah, no, that, I really uh, I appreciate the clarification. That makes complete sense. Right? So that's uh, just trying to always figure it out. But, uh, so yeah, so, um, and then I guess just in terms of, um, you know, the vertical integration being a benefit, you know, we've heard almost every food company, not always in kind of produce for this area, produce for the areas are frozen, uh, but you know, we've heard a lot about cost inflation. Um, is that, you know, cost inflation, you know, uh, you know, impact you or potentially could impact you or, you know, because of you know, kind of the contracts you have with the farmers and some sourcing coming from Italy, maybe it doesn't impact you as much. Maybe that could actually be a benefit. Just trying to figure out again, kind of cost, the cost environment overall relative to the price. So, as we strategically 
huge source are raw materials, and you're correct. With a lot of our produce coming from Italy, we're not as concerned about some of that pricing and costs that are coming into play for other manufacturers, but also being vertically integrated helps us reduce that additional cost that other companies can see and experience. But we also work hard to source from around the world to ensure that we are protected from some of these cost increases that come through, added with the vertical integration and the ability to manufacture more products and pick up some of those things within our own manufacturing, it allows us to be better protected. Okay. Um, that's good to know. Um, and then I guess just lastly, um, just a question on the warrant. Um, sometimes they're complicated. You know, it sounds like you said cash balance at the end of the year around two hundred million, um, which is you know, partially driven, I guess, by some of the cash coming in from the warrants. Um, so just kind of just to clarify again, it sounds like if that cash comes in, you can you can actually keep that cash. And redeploy into other strategic, right, uh, you know, value creating opportunities versus necessarily having to go back out into the market and buy back stock, right? It's almost it's like a it's a nice kind of cash generating vehicle, um, kind of as long as it exists. I just kind of wanted to understand that cash comes in on the warrants. Is that something you then can redeploy and kind of whether it's capex, supply chain, what have you, maybe acquisitions? Um, versus having to buy back stock. And that's all I have. Thank you. You uh, I think two points uh, to answer your question. One is just a clarification. We had 131 million on the books at the end of the year. That's what you'll see in the published financial statements. Subsequent to that, there was uh, another 70 million that came in from the warrants. That's what got us to 200 million. And there's no restrictions on that. That 200 million is, is in our coffers. It's ours to spend strategically. Uh, and the other important point is that the, the 20 million warrants are now fully exercised. So there's no more dilution coming from those warrants. So we have the cash, we can use the cash, and there's no more pending dilution. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much. Great job. Appreciate it. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes the oh. question and answer session. I would like to turn the conference back over to Sam Galetti for any closing remarks. Okay, closing remarks. Thank you for joining us today from Italy to California. I'd like to thank my dedicated team that has worked so hard to be able to make these strong results possible. We believe there is a significant growth opportunity for the Taxi Chef brand with new and existing customers in food retail as well as other areas like food service. We are off to a strong start in 2021, increasing distribution, launching exciting innovative products, and increasing our brand awareness. We look forward to speaking to you again at upcoming investor conferences on our first quarter earnings call in early May. Have a great day. This concludes today's conference call. You may disconnect your lines. Thank you for participating and have a pleasant day. Okay, so so there we go. That was a, a bit, uh, yes, yeah, so I think, yeah, very mediocre call. I felt that was true. They didn't have any slides, so apologies, uh, guys. There was that was the slide. You can see I'm clicking on slides. Um, they had no presentation for us. I guess uh, it's not like analyst day, um, but I think overall um, the call was a bit yeah, was a bit yeah. If I'm being honest, um, that Rob guy, uh, one of the uh, guys that asked asked the questions. I don't think he knew what he wanted to 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 ask. Uh, it was kind of waffling on for a while, and then Roth Capital Partners asked about, you know, why are we so great? Essentially, like why are people wanting to partner with us again? So, and then I like the the inflation question, and I think Sarah answered quite well. Being vertically in integrated, we get to save on costs that other. Uh, manufacturers or companies wouldn't be able to to do so that vertical integration came into play right there they did say as well no more dilution in terms of what they plan to do with cash we are sitting in 200 million dollars of cash which got me really excited so that's very very good to see but overall i think i think um q4 was really good we had a solid 2020 
And uh, the guidance, again, I need to review the guidance, but they, they were quite conservative with their guidance for 2021. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it went really well. I thought it went really well. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I need to digest all of this information right now. Um, and I'm sure there'll be another video out tomorrow with my re full recap. But thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed the call. So I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow.